I love the Casco Cami because you can make it so many different ways. And here I have it in this beautiful, vibrant yellow knit and I cropped it and I also did a crisscross on the edges. But my favorite way to both finish the binding and the hem to make it nice and stretchy and professional looking is to use a twin needle. This is a fabulous function on every sewing machine and especially on my Epic 95Q. It makes it so easy to swap in a twin needle, thread it up, and even set your width setting. Because you may not know, you can purchase twin needles in various widths. So you can have a wider stitch or a more close together stitch depending on your personal preference. So I have another cami cut out because again, you can never have enough camis. And I'm going to press up my hem allowance first. I find it easier with twin needles to press your hem allowance because you actually stitch from the right side. So I have my side seam stitched with a stretch stitch and I just take my sewing gauge and I like a nice thick hem with a knit and a twin needle. So I'm gonna press it up, let's say, three quarters of an inch. And since this is a knit, I'm not gonna go too hot on my iron. So I just like to press it up and then pin. This takes the work out of guessing that allowance and just folding it up while you're actively stitching. So I always like to just do this before. So I'm just gonna go around, press up my entire hem and pin periodically. Then we'll head over to the sewing machine and we'll get this hem all stitched into place with our twin needle. All right, it's twin needle time. So first I'm just gonna remove the needle and then select the nice wide twin needle setting. Take that out. Make sure it's nice and tight. So you'll need two spools of thread on the top. And so I'm going to thread my first one and I'm just going to follow just as I was threading a single needle. I'm not gonna thread the needle quite yet. So that's one of my threads. Then the second one, I just come up and I follow the exact same threading path and I'm just gonna hook it in down below. So now I'm gonna take my right spool of thread and I am going to thread it through the right needle. And then I take my left spool of thread and I thread it through my left needle. And then just put them all under the foot and behind. Now you can take your garment, and I always like to start at one of the seams. And you wanna make sure you're catching close to this edge, but not right on top of it. So I just like to feel it under my fingers and I just pinpoint a spot on the plate that I can keep my edge nice and straight. And then you just start stitching. You can do a little back stitch as well at the start and stop. You can see, looking good. And just take your pins out as you go. The key is to just have it on the twin needle setting on your machine. It's sometimes a button or it like, and then it's just a straight stitch. And you can, um, you can adjust the stitch length if you want as well. And when you come back to meet your first stitch, just make sure you get over both of your existing stitching lines to make this transition nice and smooth. You can do a couple back stitches and then lift your presser foot. I find the threads get less tangled if you, if you do um, cut your threads manually and not the automatic thread cutter. Now you're ready to continue stitching. Now I have the hem of my Costco cami and it's nice and stretchy so I don't have to worry about pop stitches 
and best of all it looks so professional it looks like I bought this at the store and it's just a couple of steps on your sewing machine but my final tip is to make sure you turn off the twin needle setting from your sewing machine if you're going to go and stitch another seam that's not with your twin needle bye everyone I hope you enjoyed this tip on sewing with a twin needle